Hi, Lysander. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Mike. Thank you for inviting me. All right, it's always a pleasure. I have a lot of questions for you, so let's jump right in. So would you recommend a life in music? And if so, why? Are you talking about globally? Because for what a very important aspect is really in which country you are located. I feel like um, the possibilities to make music in certain countries are better and in other countries are maybe a little bit more difficult to really become professional and make a really good living out of it. Um, I, I, I was born in Moldova and in Moldova, of course, there are many fantastic musicians, but just the possibilities we have out there, um, they're a little limited. So most of the musicians just get away and just go out of the country and try to find working places other in other countries, you know, around the world. And uh, that's also fine because, you know, being a musician is a journey and it's just, uh, it's all about discovering and discovering different countries and traveling and, and being uh, inspired by many places you go to. But I have to say that it's a really tough life and you really have to be born for it in order to make it out of a small country or make it out of a, a country that is more limited, you know, in terms of perspective. Um, so you really, really have to want that and, and fight a lot to get to a place where you are independent and you can actually make a good living out of it. So the, the, the answer is, you know, if you're really passionate about music, if you really want to do music, you will not be able to not do it. So I guess the question is, it's not maybe the first choice of profession in terms of, you know, when you're thinking about making a stable living and, and just having like a safe life, being a musician is, is not safe. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think sometimes um, you have to be willing to travel. And I think that can be difficult because I love traveling, but doing touring for like six months or even a year, I think that that's quite hard to do. And especially when you start missing home and you want to just stay home and write music in the comfort of your own home. Do you find sometimes the traveling aspect of this line of work can be difficult? Oh, of course. I mean, it really depends in what stage in life you are currently you know, uh, you know, where you are right now. For example, for me, uh, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago, traveling and being on tour was the most exciting thing ever. And I, I only wanted to be on the road. I only wanted to travel and to play concerts. And um, since I started having more of my own projects, doing more of my own music and just working on various own projects, Obviously, uh, you need the time to develop that, you know, and that that's just time at home. And since I, I build up my studio and I'm working a lot of home, I have the big desire to be home and to, to work on those projects. So it's not that I don't love traveling and I really still enjoy so, so much being on tour and, and getting to know um, new countries and also traveling to the countries I've already been to and, and being on stage. But just right now, I think that uh, my my passion for music developed in more directions where I actually need the time at home. So um, sometimes I miss it, of course, and just, you know, different time in your life uh, brings different wishes and, and just different perspective on making music. It is a, it's a, a big adventure, isn't it? So what? What do you do to inspire yourself? Do you ever get creative blocks where um, you want to create music, but you just can't get into the right frame of mind? When when these days happen, do you, is there a certain thing you do to get yourself inspired? Yeah, it's... it's... I don't know exactly uh, if I ever felt like a creative block because also I haven't been in the situation where I 
where I had to do something and I felt like I don't have any inspiration. So, um, but I think that that's, that's just very different, different from, you know, from, from job to job. Um, I do do, I, I do a lot, a lot of things to keep my mind busy, to keep my spirit free, to keep uh, the inspiration coming. I try to uh, discover new things, to constantly learn new things. And that inspires me a lot. I, uh, if it's, I don't know, maybe learning a new instrument or learning how to deal with a new program or new software or just trying out uh, new music. I, I you know, I, I never mm, I try not to stay bored or to stay blocked whenever I feel like I need to, to uh, develop my mind and bring new inspiration. I try to do something new that keeps me exciting and um, just pushes me to learn and to become better. I love it. Yeah, because then when it's something new, it's kind of an adventure, isn't it? You don't know, you don't know what the final destination will be and you kind of see where it takes you. That's great. And do you have any advice for any young artist looking to get into the world of music, to make a life in music? What advice do you have for those ones? I think the same that I, 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 I tell myself every day, uh, stay curious and never think that where you are right now is enough. Always um, keep a busy schedule in terms of what you want to do. Always set goals that are you know, higher than the ones that you think you can reach. Uh, and then I think you can reach much more than you expect to. So dream big is definitely a thing that brought me pretty far and everything is possible it's the only person who puts limitations is you and especially in the era of that we live right now in a lot of things are possible that were not possible before so uh, just um, you know follow your dreams and your dreams should be very very big good advice and what what three practical things could you recommend if you had to narrow it down to just three that you would recommend to new musicians to, to do to increase their probability of success? Well, that's easy, like practice, practice, practice. <laughs> um, no, but of course, this is a joke. Practicing is very, very, very important. It's number one, and you have to reach a level where you are safe in terms of, you just feel free to, to express yourself through your instrument. Number two is always look for possibilities. Be very informed, do a lot of research, uh, try to find um, what is it that you can do to promote yourself, to, to create more, um, opportunities for yourself and three be social be very social just try to connect with a lot of musicians connect and and create a large community of people around you who are also creative who can inspire you make you want to become better oh, that's brilliant advice so i think actually that that is so important because i think mental health plays a role um, in this line of work too, because sometimes it can be quite lonely. And, and given that um, a lot of the work we do these days can be online, how valuable do you feel that musical collaboration is? It's super important, um, especially now when that is possible to to do abroad, uh, just like the way we worked on various projects. It's just a very beautiful thing to communicate and to work with musicians around the world um, and make music uh, without borders. Um, just that brings you further. You can always learn from uh, another artist. You can always learn from a collaboration. And I feel like going alone on this journey of being a musician is very, very hard. And maybe a few make it as really solo individual artists and performers. But at the, in the end, it's all about collaborating with other people and, and ex exchanging uh, experiences and learning from each other. And a deep question. In order to understand who you are today, what do we need to know about you? Okay, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> um, 
I mean, I, I think that my heritage plays a big role in who I am. Coming from a small country, Moldova uh, is a very small country, but with rich culture and with very deep, meaningful uh, ideas of life and, and of, of existence. And I think that shaped me a lot into becoming who I am today. Um, what else? That I am really, I think I can say I'm a passionate musician because everything I do comes from a type of passion and desire within me that often I cannot explain and I don't know exactly where it all comes from. But I just know one thing that I have to let it out. And I just know that somehow I found my purpose on this world and that's making music and it makes me very fulfilled and uh, making music and sharing it with the world is, is the biggest joy that I can have. And uh, I hope that whoever listens to my music or to me performing can feel that. And I think that sums it up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Actually, I was th as you were describing that, it made me think of uh, your record, uh, Pampily and Friends, um, which was the first record you, you, you guys have done together, isn't it? Yes, that uh, is the first record. I I wanted to really make a statement about what music means to me. And I am very, very inspired by uh, international folk music and, of course, music from my own country. And I wanted to show my heritage in my first album. That's why it's also called Primul, which means the first in my uh, language in Romanian. And it, it meant for a lot to me to, to do that, especially with my band with my friends um yeah i think that 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 fire that passion definitely comes through that music and also you, you can tell that it's a group of friends because there's a connectivity within the group that you just don't get unless you know each other musically and personality wise and i think um records like that are quite special and quite rare today especially you know from a pandemic um uh, a pandemic ruined world that we live in currently that we're still recovering from. I think it's it's a really good, a shining example of what music can and should do. I highly recommend everyone check that out. Um, and another question then, what would you say is the greatest challenge you faced as an artist and how have you overcome, how did you overcome that? The biggest challenge for me is overcoming mental difficulties that come on the road of being a musician. I think that I, I personally don't know any musician who hasn't felt insecure or put down by certain situations or moments in their life where uh, I, I had to experience a lot of downfalls and to come back from that and to not let, let it take me down I think that was the biggest challenge and to always um, fight to stay uh, motivated and to to not um, let it get to me I think that is the biggest challenge and my own um, my own insecurities just to fight against them and always uh, remember that is everything is a journey and everything makes uh, sense in the end and everything is part of becoming uh, a musician so that's that's i think that's my struggle that's a really good one actually i, I remember um when you guys were on tour with with hans zimmer recently um with what had happened in ukraine and of course the ukrainian members of the orchestra um and you, you were talking about this quite openly on instagram and it just made me think how difficult it is to do this job and have that kind of experience and being around those people that were directly affected and uh, not to mention also your your um home country is is so nearby it's difficult isn't it when you live in the world that we live in to to carry on um doing a good job whilst these things are happening around us so do you find that sometimes it's very difficult to keep focused and to stay positive um in these times Absolutely. Besides Moldova being very close to Ukraine, I'm also a quarter Ukrainian. So for me, the last Hans Simon Life tour was 
emotionally very difficult and being around so many Ukrainian musicians in the orchestra and just having a lot of friends as well from Ukraine and the news, it, it was really hard to fight tears uh, on stage as well. But I always learned that all these emotions can make my performance even more powerful and I can reach more people through my performance. Um, and generally making music and creating that in incredible energy on stage without words, without talking. There is a type of communication on a spiritual level between us performance and the audience. And I think we can reach a lot with that uh, if we learn how to channel those emotions into the performance. And of course, it was really hard and it was difficult. But I remember how we were talking even before with the musicians from Ukraine and with, and how always eager we were to get on stage, how happy, you know, that moment felt. Um, and just being on stage in that moment, that is that one moment of, of really peace and of happiness that we could feel in that time. So it was a blessing for us to be on tour in that specific moment. Yeah, that energy that you're talking about, um, having been in the audience in Manchester at the time, um, it was so apparent that that energy, you could feel it. It's hard to sum it up in words, but it, it's, a, it's an event that you never forget. And it's funny because I remember looking around and seeing so many people in tears. Um, and that just goes to show the power of the music and how it, it, it personifies that emotion. It just gets it across to the audience and it just goes to show um, how unifying music is and how powerful it can be. And uh, yeah, what, what, an, what an, uh, an incredible show that was. And also, I think it's a really good lesson in, um, in, in character, isn't it? Because when you're a musician, it's sometimes, I guess you, one could say that we are perhaps more sensitive than the non-artist type. And it can then, then sometimes be very difficult for us to, to, to work under these circumstances. But I think when one goes through things, it does develop your character, it does make you stronger. And I think if, if, you're, if, if, you, if you know your art form well, you can channel that like you, you, you all did extremely well into the music. And it creates this experience that every single person in that audience will remember for the rest of their life. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that musicians are so sensitive and but remember one thing, we have to learn how to deal with our emotions since we start playing. And that's something that maybe other people who are not musicians don't necessarily have to have to face emotions so often the way we do when you have to pull yourself together every single time when you go on stage when you know you have only that one chance and that starts from childhood i remember i, I started playing violin with six so i had to to pull myself together for each exam and no matter how bad i was feeling or what i had or even now nobody knows what really happens in your life besides going on stage so and that's also not important because you want to give your best performance for each audience and i think that we are very sensitive but we also learn how to deal with emotions in a more extreme way than non-musician have to do yeah i agree yeah it's a, there's a certain empathy and a certain self-control that musicians have through practice that they can demonstrate for all aspects of life that I think gives us a certain edge in that way. And in, on that kind of line of thought, do you feel that social media is important for artists today? And also, how do you feel about social media in that it does seem to be, it creates kind of like an emotional detachment between people? I mean, I, of course, social media is very important and it's a tool to promote yourself. It's a tool to share your work with the world and also share uh, your persona with the world so that people also know who's behind the performer, who's behind the artist. But it can also be very tricky. And uh, that's why I also talked openly about 
that aspect. Uh, first of all, what I dislike about social media is that it's just becoming so fast and like fast consuming, fast food consuming of, of art. And, and that's just the algorithms creating uh, this new uh, type of interaction between audience and artists. And I'm more, of course, a fan of, of the real deal of, of listening to a record and listening to a full track. And that just seems to, to start to fade a little bit away in, in social media nowadays. And it becomes very superficial and also a lot of artists who I wouldn't say they're necessarily professional, but they get a lot, a lot, a lot of um, uh, likes and, and follows and, and views on uh, social media, but it's not really what it's about being being a musician, you know, there is still a good, being a good musician is about quality and about creating something. That's just something you can't necessarily show in 10 seconds. So I don't really like that aspect uh, so much. And uh, I hope it will change a little bit. And I hope that uh, the audience is not going to be too influenced by this new wave and still always be in the search of quality, in the search of looking up the artist, who is behind the artist, who's making the music, and is that the, you know, the real deal? Uh, because, of course, if everybody consumes so, so much fast information online, the real artist who is taking time to put something out there that is longer or maybe one minute or something like that, it's just going to uh, d disappear in, in, in the whole system because of the algorithm. I agree. It's kind of like, it makes me think of cooking. If you have something home cooked that takes all day for them to cook it and it's made with love and then you can, you can smell that it's made with love and the, the whole home smells of that food as compared to, you know, going into KFC, which just smells like oil and fat. And one food is exceptionally well made and the other one is cheaply well made. And it's kind of like that with social media, isn't it? It's kind of, it's very busy and it's full of a lot of cheap instant likes, instant comments, everyone's just chasing that as opposed to what artists do, which is put a lot of themselves into a project that takes time and patience and effort and starting again sometimes or redoing things to, to get it right. And the problem with that is, like you said about the algorithm, it doesn't favor you because you're taking, you're not posting every five minutes, you're, you're doing something with love and it therefore takes time. But I do think that, um, those who are looking for professional musicians will always see past the blue ticks and the, the people that post, you know, 10 times a day, because there's, there is, a, is an obvious quality difference when you see somebody who puts something out that is um, made with love, care and attention, as opposed to, um, you know, just trying to get likes and almost like the shock factor, isn't it? People like to shock people by um, putting out material that grabs their attention like an advert, but art isn't an advert. It's, it's um, you could say art is a reason for living, I suppose. Do, do you feel, um, is that how you feel about it? Yes, I, I don't like this fast consuming of, of shocking things, you know, and clickbaits and stuff like that. I, I really, really dislike that direction where, um, a lot of people who are not even artists just portray themselves as artists on social media. And I have to tell you, it's very, very hard to see the difference if you're not a trained musician or you're not someone who constantly listens to music. It's very, very hard. And you see like one million likes or 100 million views and you think, oh, that must be good, right? So mm -hmm. I think that the problem here is that before people uh, 50, 60 years ago would go a lot to theaters, would go to concerts, would listen to records at home. And they, the, their whole perception of music was much refined. And they could also tell what is good and what is not so good. And right now, the, the only source of listening to music and, and seeing is, is the internet. And it's mostly Instagram and and. Um, so that can be very dangerous, I think, for the general perception of music, the general quality of people's perception. Um, but I think it's also not sustainable. So it's probably just a wave and sooner or later they will 
they will fade away because if there is no substance in there, it will only, it's just a matter of time. I, I agree. Yeah. And I noticed that you've been experimenting with a lot of really cool different instruments from synthesizers. You had a, a really cool thing made recently that was delivered. I saw on Instagram that, oh, that sounds so good. So what, what instruments do you find boost your creativity the most that uh, really inspire you to make music? I mean, of course, um, opening myself to the world of electronic instruments has been a big revelation in my life. And I, th I feel like I've always heard those sounds in my head somewhere. I just didn't know how can I make them because uh, being a classically trained musician, we don't really deal with electronic instruments so much. We, we don't learn about it. We don't know about analog synthesizers that you can create all this incredible sound. And just opening myself to that uh, world has shown me how much more I can do, how much more I can create and, and that it, layers and layers and layers of, of diversity. Uh, uh, and I think that also um, historical instruments and old folk instruments are uh, always a great source of inspiration for me. Very recently, I received my nickel harpa, which is a Swedish instrument, and it's quite rare. Um, and not many people play it. So just for me uh, to have that instrument and playing it at home even teaches me a lot about how I can become a better violinist. And just generally different sounds, different different layers of sounds and experimenting with that um, has brought me much, much further, I think, as an artist uh, in my career. And also since I started composing, I just find it so important to learn about the instruments so you know how to adapt them in your compositions, how to incorporate them in your compositions. That's really, really important. Good advice. And what goals do you have and what are you doing to help yourself to reach those goals? Well, I have really big goals. You know, I, like I said before, set your goals really, really up high. And um, since for me, music has been very uh, visual always, even before I started uh, working in, in the film music industry and working with Hans Zimmer, I, I always had these pictures, what I would play. I always had pictures to music or colors to music. And, and I feel somewhere deep inside, I, I would really like to become a film music composer one day. And um, I, this is something that I just started working towards. And I, I, I feel like whenever I see a picture, I hear music, I feel very motivated to go in that direction. So that's one of my, my big goals, to be not only a performer, but to also be a, a composer. I, I can see you being a film composer, actually. Um, that, that's very easy to imagine. And uh, yeah, I, th I feel like um, because in film composing or in media co composition in general, there's a, a certain sensitivity you need to have towards picture to be able to um, to find a thread of the narrative that needs that needs to be scored, and I feel like that is something that you would quite naturally be able to do very very well. So, what what are you doing to increase the success or the the possibilities of success in doing that? Um, I started already releasing some of my original music that I already think it's quite visual quite cinematic and the biggest project that i have and i've been working on it for a long time is working on my full album of original compositions and i when i when i had um this idea of am i going to make an album with the music um actually the whole music started first with a story i had a story in my head um and i said well i love composing uh, visually, why don't I write a soundtrack for my own story? And that way I, I can really express myself into each piece of music by um, creating landscapes with, with sounds, by creating characters with sounds. And 
just by telling a story with the entire album and that's going to come out uh, at the end of this year. Wow, I look forward to seeing and, and hearing that record. That's a fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, we look forward to hearing what you do with your future releases. Thank you, Michael. All the best to you too.